If you're looking for a quieter pace of life, fresh produce, and a beautiful beach to mountain backdrop, Bulgaria, regardless of the city you move to, is in a strategic location, has vibrant economy, stunning nature, vivid culture, and their well-known talented Balkan friendliness of the people. That's why many expats have fallen in love with Bulgaria's old world charm and tradition, choosing it as their short-term or permanent home. Hello everyone, this is Ronan Blue and today's topic is on the 8 best reasons to retire to Bulgaria. Just as a disclaimer, the information provided is a general guide and to be used for educational purposes only. Now Bulgaria is becoming ever more popular with expats looking for a more affordable cost of living with a good healthy lifestyle. So what's it like to live in Bulgaria and how do you go about moving and retiring in the old world European charm? Well let's jump into the points coming now. Number 1. Culture in Bulgaria by walking through the streets of one of the oldest capitals in Europe, Sofia, you'll enjoy buildings and artifacts from the Neolithic times from 6,000 to 4,000 years BC to the present day. Sofia has a rich historical heritage accumulated over the centuries. The city was ruled by Caesars, Khans, Sultans and Kings having more than 7,000 years of history and manages today in successfully blending tradition with the modern and metropolitan lifestyle. It's located on the Balkan Peninsula in southeastern Europe and bordered on the east by the Black Sea, on the north by Romania, and the south by Greece and Turkey, and on the west by Macedonia and Serbia. The landscape consists of mountains, foothills and plains, and one third of the territory is forested. And although Bulgaria is in the EU, it's actually not in the Eurozone. Throughout its history there have been a number of ancient civilizations, Thracian, Slavic and Bulgar traditions that have blended in. The name Bulgar and Bulgarian most likely derive from the Turic verb meaning to mix. It also includes the influence of the Eastern Orthodox Church, leaving their mark on the culture, history and heritage of Bulgaria as well. There's also a strong folkloric tradition like the well-known fire dancing that comes from the Thracians and some traditions that mixed within many of its aspects of art, literature, music, celebrations and daily life. It has a long history of being conquered by surrounding countries such as the Romans, Ottoman and Persian regimes where many attempts have been made to repress local culture. But through it all there has always been a strong linguistic base and resilience that preserved and retained its identity that eventually had them emerge as an independent nation with their unique food, traditions, habits and beliefs to which the people are very proud of today. In 2007 the country joined the European Union and has since improved its standards of living drastically. Its population today is under 7 million and the official and native spoken language is Bulgarian, part of the Slavic group and the Cyrillic alphabet is used. Many cultures today are mixed within its group structure. The Bulgarians, Turks and the Romanian Gypsies being the top three. But the dominant national culture, almost 85%, is that of the ethnic Bulgarians, but there is less sense of a shared national culture among the three main ethnic groups. The population is largely homogenous and the degree of cultural variation, even at the regional level, is small. But since all citizens participate in a national economy, they all have a shared national bureaucratic political culture shaping the cultural practices of the constituent ethnic groups. But within their daily lives, it's dominated by a much older tradition and cultural legacy. Many households, as an example, consist of an extended family comprising parents and one of their married sons, usually the youngest, or daughters. There are some Bulgarian etiquette as well, like don't point your index finger, don't ever slap someone on the back, and to remember that you nod no and shake your head for yes. Bulgarians are joyful people and they like to celebrate, so don't be surprised by the many holidays in the calendar, including the numerous name days. A name day is usually a religious-based holiday that is correlated with a particular saint. Number two, where to live in Bulgaria. Sofia is the capital of Bulgaria, so that means everything is here almost everything. Now this city is a surprise with its cosmopolitan vibe and cafe scene, 
majestic buildings, vast gardens, parched with hundreds of thousands of beautiful yellow tulips, planted in the city parks, and there is no shortage of good restaurants as well. Sofia's old town also has this contrast between the east and the west, each with its own character. Several thousand international expats live in the capital, the most affordable city in Western Europe. Some even say that the most beautiful part of the city is on the eastern side, where the nice buildings, cafes, restaurants, co-working spaces, and parks are. The western part of the city has grey old Soviet buildings and malls designed to accommodate as many working class families as possible. Many of the expat city dwellers are workers, and the city boasts a thriving startup scene. The city centre is small enough that no car is required if you live downtown, so it's very walkable. The nice thing about the Bulgarian capital is that you don't even need to look at the prices. Everything is affordable, so usually there are no ugly surprises. Plovdiv this city, Europe's 2019 capital of culture, is built on seven hills in one of the oldest cities in Europe, but it has a very youthful spirit. Many say it's hipster-like and a great place for artists and creative people. It has a partially restored Roman stadium, an open-air Roman theater, now used to stage open-air concerts and plays. It's actually cheaper than Sofia and has a lot of English speakers, so foreigners love staying here. It has good infrastructure, especially in railway transport, and the quality of the roads is good as well. It's also a safe place to live and is one of the highly developed districts. It's an area with the second best labor market and a high concentration of investment and people have access to the highest quality of healthcare and education. Varna. Now this is a hugely popular coastal city on the Black Sea because of its many direct budget flights to this beach town business hub. There are concerts, opera and theater performances that are regularly held in the area and festivals and holidays for all ages from the youngest to the oldest. There's also good economic development and the labor market is dynamic and economic activity is high. The incomes and living standards in the Varna district have been growing in recent years and has a great potential and opportunities for development. This is one of the reasons why foreign direct investment is growing rapidly there. It also remains one of the largest university centers in Bulgaria. A large number of universities in the district attract students from other parts of the country as well as from other countries. Number 3. Food in Bulgaria Banitsa. This is a traditional Bulgarian pastry pie that has a layering combination of beaten eggs and bits of white cheese within filo pastry dough. The filling is usually soft serene cheese and yogurt and the dough curves around itself like a spiral. It's then drizzled with honey, making it an indulgent breakfast. It's baked in the oven until it's cooked on the inside and crispy on the outside. Be warned, however, the calorie count is very high, highly addictive, and extremely delicious. Tarator. This is a cold cucumber soup, eaten especially for the summer months. It's generally served as a first course and could also be served as a side dish to the main meal. It's commonly made with fresh cucumbers, walnuts, garlic, Bulgarian yogurt, dill, herbs, and vinegar or lemon. It's super refreshing and very tasty. Although the combination sounds weird, it would probably be one of the tastiest cold soups you'll ever have. In some restaurants, you'll find it under a snow white salad or a dry version of territory without water. Sopska salad. Most every dish in Bulgaria has a fresh, simple Sopska salad. It's a combination of cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, peppers, and grated white cheese on top. Everyone loves a tasty salad. Number four, things to do in Bulgaria. Sofia, as mentioned earlier, would be Bulgaria's biggest city and capital. It's one of the largest gateways in Bulgaria and is a city that is now recovering from the transition to democracy and capitalism. So you'll still find many old buildings, roads and sidewalks, some in bad shape, adding that character to the city. They also have high rocky peaks home to their homes, huge national parks where endangered animals roam wild, and sandy beaches that hug the 
Black Sea, but many find it adventurous to explore Sofia on foot, where most attractions are relatively close to each other, where you can walk between them. You can go and explore medieval Bulgarian Orthodox churches, go climbing in national parks to Sabarilla lakes, or visit the oldest continuously inhabited city in Europe, Plovdiv, dating back to 6000 BC when it was a Thracian settlement. You can also go to the biggest beach resort in Bulgaria, Sunny Beach, one of the most famous in Eastern Europe and the Black Sea. It's infamous for its crazy nightlife and lively vibe, both during day and night, almost every day of the week too. There are piano bars, English pubs, discos, and all sorts of themed establishments, making it one of the most diverse places for nightlife in Europe. There are always events happening and activities for everyone. And if you're an art lover, Sofia is definitely your dream city. Museums, theaters, and galleries can be found on every corner in the city. You can also feel like you've traveled back in time by visiting ancient cities built on small peninsulas with cobble streets lined with old ruins like baths, churches, and fortifications. And this whole setting creates a very charming setting. And on top of this, there's areas surrounded by very beautiful beaches as well. There's an interesting stone forest as well desert-like rock formations, one of the very few deserts in Europe that have sand dunes and groups of natural rock formations between 5 to 7 meters high. You'll definitely be wondering how they were created. Number 5. Cost of Living in Bulgaria One of the best advantages of relocating to Bulgaria is the extremely low cost of living, while at the same time being able to live in the European Union. If you want to retire in Bulgaria, you will have a pleasant surprise with how inexpensive your monthly costs can be. Bulgaria is one of the affordable countries in Europe to live and has quickly become a favorite among travelers. With a modest budget, you can live well off and the country's central location is perfect for exploring the region, like countries like Greece, Turkey, and Romania on your doorstep. You can probably afford luxuries too costly than the United States. Living in Bulgaria doesn't cost nearly as much as the United States. Mercer's annual cost of living actually lists Sofia on the 180th place price-wise. Life outside of the capital is even cheaper. Interesting enough, although Bulgaria is a member of the European Union, the standard of living is somewhat low. Rent costs are not high for expats who come from richer countries. Even buying a property for a reasonable price is possible. Rent-wise though, the cost of living in Sofia is the highest. With healthcare, both Bulgarians and expats could get it very cheaply. Emergency services are also free and everyone can get treated in the emergency room, but we'll talk about more about this in the coming healthcare section. For transportation, you can choose between air, land travel, train, and bus networks, slow compared to American standards, but they're popular because of their low prices. The food is also cheaper than most European countries, especially if you plan to eat out. Groceries are also very affordable. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant would be $7 between $5 and $12. A meal for two people at a mid-range restaurant for a three-course meal would be $33 between $24 and $48 USD. Basic utilities would be $124 between $72 and $181 USD per month. The internet would be $13 between $9 and $18 USD per month. A fitness club per month would be $28 between $18 and $36 USD. A cinema would be $7 between $6 and $9 USD. An apartment one bedroom in city center would be $455 between $362 and $604 USD per month. An apartment one bedroom outside the city center would be $335 between $272 and $435 USD per month. An apartment three bedrooms in city center would be $820 between $604 and $1,209 USD per month. An apartment three bedrooms outside the city center would be $578 between 
$483 and $786 USD per month. So there are plenty of empty apartments in Sofia. So finding a cheap one to rent is not hard. Of course, it's strongly recommended to rent a property in Bulgaria first before you ever buy property. Renting will allow you to get familiar with the area and make sure it works for you all year round. Property taxes are also low if you choose to buy property. Many have actually been living in Bulgaria on a standard pension where you can even have a basic standard of living back where you're watching this vlog from. Number six, buy property in Bulgaria. Since 2012, all EU persons are allowed to buy land and property in Bulgaria without the registration of a business. The same regulation applies for citizens of countries from the European Economic Area, the EEA. For all other persons who are not citizens of the EU or EEA countries, there is a restriction on buying land in Bulgaria, but if you want to buy a house in Bulgaria, you'll need to register a Bulgarian company. To note as well, buying a property does not entitle non-EU residents of any kind of permanent visa. This is done separately. But all foreigners can buy apartments in Bulgaria in their own names. The best place to look for properties is on the internet, as there are numerous websites with a huge variety of properties. Bulgaria varies enormously from incredibly rural hamlets to small villages, larger towns and cities. Some villages are actually entirely dead, and if you purchase without seeing it, you might be the only one there. The big cities are the most sought after locations, with the capital, Sofia, leading the way. But away from Sofia, foreigners are largely attracted to the pretty Black Sea coast, which is known as the Bulgarian Riviera. It has almost 248 miles or 400 kilometers of coast, and there are many different towns and cities there. It has become something of a hotspot for digital nomads in the last few years, with Varna especially popular with internet workers. Buying a home in Bulgaria is actually easy, but you do have to be careful because like everywhere else, there are con men waiting to steal your money. There are also plenty of online property agencies and these agencies usually hike the price up by three times because they want to attract foreigners who are loose with their money. They know that some foreigners can't buy property under a particular price and they raise the prices of the homes giving them a ton of profit. The other option and the cheaper one is to buy property directly from a seller or private finder. There's that temptation to buy from another foreigner because there's no language barrier, but sometimes they can't be trusted either unless you go to Facebook where you'll find reviews of the sellers or finders. But of course you want to visit the country first to see any property you decide to buy. Some decide just by the pictures. Some renovation agencies make the houses look really nice and presentable for a internet sale, but as soon as you scratch a little deeper, you'll find it's all superficial. Every area is different as well, so you can't really predict where will suit you. And if you're buying as a couple, you don't want to end up by yourselves. You may need to take a translator or a lawyer with you if you don't speak Bulgarian, but many do speak English quite well. But for more detailed information about buying property, there are plenty of resources you can refer to, but Facebook looks to be a great place to start. Number seven, healthcare in Bulgaria. Now, healthcare in Bulgaria is universal and financed by compulsory health insurance contribution taxes and out-of-pocket payments, in addition to voluntary health insurance premiums, corporate payments, donations and other funding. Now, if you're from the EU in Bulgaria, you will need EHIC or an S1 form to get access to the same level of public healthcare as Bulgarian residents. But to enroll in the Bulgarian healthcare system, you must first get your residency. Now, if you're not eligible for an S1 card, you'll have to register with the National Health Insurance Fund and pay compulsory contributions. Expats who are about to move to the country must buy an international health insurance policy that covers overseas medical evacuation and airlifting during a medical emergency. Private health coverage is highly advisable, and although plans are expensive in comparison to the cost of state medical treatment, they are still cheaper than other countries. As an expat, the quality of healthcare that you find in Bulgaria will depend on whether you are accessing the public sector care or if you have taken out private health insurance, and in addition, which region of a country you are based in. In the big urban areas, public health care is a reasonably high standard, but you might find relics of the Soviet system in more rural regions. 
and there is often a shortage of medical personnel once you get out of the cities. Sofia and Plovdiv, among others, have university hospitals which undertake cutting-edge research. But it was also mentioned that the average Bulgarian has no confidence in the public health care system. It has limitations such as poor infrastructure, inadequate equipment, understaffing, and lack of funding. Now the private health care system is growing with around 8,000 big modern clinics across the country, especially in the capital of Sofia, and Bulgaria has become a popular destination for health tourism. Compared to the United States and some other EU nations, some treatment will be more cost effective. And also to make note, in the event of an emergency, you can go to any public hospital and receive free medical care. And if living in Bulgaria, you will have the option to sign up for the Bulgarian VAT number and be part of the Bulgarian health insurance fund. Number 8. How to live in Bulgaria. All those entering Bulgaria should have at least six months validity remaining on their passports, counted from the date they travel. Many nationalities will actually qualify for entry to Bulgaria without a visa for a period of up to 90 days, while for others it may only be up to 30 days within each six-month period. This 30 or 90-day visa-free period does not entitle you to work and is intended for tourism, recreation, or short-term visits to friends or family. In order to work in Bulgaria, citizens of most countries will require a visa and a work permit. You may also need a visa before you travel if you're planning to stay for a period longer than 90 days or if your intended visit would mean that you have been in Bulgaria for more than 90 days in the last 180 day period. All foreigners visiting Bulgaria are required to register as foreigners at a local police station within 5 days of arrival. This registration is usually done on your behalf through a hotel or accommodation provider that you are using, assuming you are visiting as a tourist. It's worth checking at the reception desk to confirm this and to have a copy of the registration slip in case you need it when you exit the country. Now, there are different visa types. Visa D. This visa is typically issued to students, long-term business travelers, work permit holders, or investors. There's Visa C. Nationals of countries that do not qualify for a visa exemption can apply for a Visa C if you wish to travel to Bulgaria. This is valid for single or multi-entries with stays that do not exceed the 90-day limit within a six-month period. But you can apply for a visa at your local embassy or consulate, and you should do this no more than three months before you intend to travel. But as an American, it's really difficult, near impossible to get a visa to live in Sofia, unless you work for a company who sponsors your visa, study in the country, or start a business that hires at least 10 Bulgarians. The freelancer visa is nearly impossible to get as well, not least because it starts with speaking B1 level Bulgarian, which is hard to do unless you already live there. If you're an EU citizen, moving to Sofia is close to easy and will require dealing with some migration officers, but it's nothing more than some basic paperwork. But there is much more detailed publicly available information, too much to mention all here. It's best to go directly to Bulgaria's government website or your own where you are watching this vlog from. Now this would be the bonus section for those that have reached all the way here. Here are the pros and cons of living in Bulgaria, starting with the pros. One of the best advantages of relocating to Bulgaria is the extremely low cost of living, while at the same time being able to live in the European Union. The healthcare in Bulgaria, private healthcare, is excellent and the number shows the economy is growing faster than expected, bringing even better improvements. Natural beauty. Bulgaria is a place that might surprise you with its beaches, forests, cities, and the opportunity to ski in winter. It has four seasons. You'll never complain for it being too hot or cold for too long. It has a humid continental climate. Winter here is cold, but not as cold as in Northern Europe. The summers are warm, but soft not as hot as Greece or Turkey. Sofia has a strong expat presence. This is because skilled Bulgarians tend to go abroad to seek wages with their skills, leaving a hole that is filled by skilled expats 
who are content to earn less than they might in other countries but live well thanks to Bulgaria's low prices. But a con to this may be that you will be expected to understand Bulgarian well enough to work at the skill level for which you were hired. Non-native speakers will almost always be asked to complete both an oral and written language test. Culturally rich. Due to its geographic position, you can find Slavic influences by also Persian and Greek, making Bulgaria a very culturally rich place with many aspects to discover. There's also a slower pace of life in Bulgaria, and because the cost of living is lower, it's easier to make the most of what Bulgaria has to offer. There's also an active nightlife, especially during the summer. Life starts in the evening, making it a very exciting place to live. The people in Bulgaria Area are extremely warm and family oriented. People in Sofia are friendly, honest and humble people. There are also big corporations where the spoken language is English and the working environments is multinational. There are media initiatives like Let's Clean Bulgaria Together that help create the importance of living in a clean environment. There's also the safety and security. Usually nothing will happen if you leave the car open or forget to put the alarm at night. It's not like being in a world of luxury compared to other parts of the world where people live constantly scared of being robbed. Bulgaria also allows equal opportunities for men and women and provides legal protection against discrimination on the basis of race, gender, religion, age, sexual orientation or disability. As a full member of the European Union, Bulgaria enjoys a high level of stability that expats seek when relocating abroad. That includes a stable banking system with low crime rate. Bulgaria also has one of the lowest personal income tax and corporate tax rates in the European Union. Bulgaria is also in the middle between EU EFTA, Russia, Asia and the Middle East. Easy to travel from, giving you a strategic advantage to gaining access to a massive portion of the world. It's also constantly in the top 10 for internet connection speeds in the world. There's also 14 centuries of cultural heritage and if you love your history, you will never be short of stories here. Sofia is a relatively small European city, which means it is totally walkable. Everything is at a short walking distance. The food. Now Bulgaria is a very diverse country that sits between the east and the west. All these rich influences merge into the local cuisine. Most people also speak perfect English, especially the younger generations. Parks and gardens. There are plenty of gardens and parks. Many of them are huge. People in Sofia like to hang out with their friends there, socialize and enjoy a drink while going on a walk or sitting on the grass. It could be called one of the greenest capitals in Europe. Now for the cons. It could be cold. As a mountainous country, Bulgaria has some significant weather changes during the year. The winter can be quite cold even on the Black Sea coast. Driving a car in Bulgaria. Now there is heavy snow in winter and you'll be driving over many areas with potholes meaning you will probably want a four-wheel drive vehicle. The bureaucratic procedures and getting advice from people sometimes ends up being either wrong or missing of documents. Bulgaria is still mostly a cash economy. You can still pay with a card in the malls and supermarkets, but not in the case of other places such as markets, street stalls, or most restaurants. So it's always a good idea to always have some cash on you. Some exchange, seaside resorts, and places tourists are frequent. Some establishments usually add an extra digit to the rate. It's very easy to miss the difference and even some locals have fallen for this trick. To be on the safe side, always use banks but have your ID with you as they'll ask for it. It's always best to double check the bill before paying to ensure everything is correct especially for some restaurants. Sometimes you'll find an extra appetizer or a cocktail you didn't order and that's rarely an honest mistake. Usually it's the server trying to make some cash on the side. Dark back alleys. Many of Bulgaria's back streets and alleys don't have adequate lighting at night. This doesn't mean you'll be mugged or assaulted, but it's usually best to be avoided. To avoid unpleasant experiences, stick to the main streets if walking to your destination or get a taxi. Avoid fake taxis. There are some fake taxi companies that charge inflated rates. They use fake stickers and paint their cars to appear as if 
they're a part of a legitimate company. You should use official mobile apps, Yellow for instance, or ask your hotel receptionist or restaurant staff to call you a cab. You need to be aware of stray animals as well. This is an issue in Bulgaria and they are looking to fix it. But there's still an alarming number of stray dogs and cats freely roaming the streets and you want to keep your distance to avoid diseases or getting bitten. Natural disasters and weather. Now Bulgaria is located in a seismically active zone. Multiple tremors are felt throughout the year but most of these are minimal. But you also want to be aware during the rainy months of flash flooding. During the summer wildfires are a threat to Bulgaria. While people here are usually kind to foreigners there are some scenes of racism not against white Europeans, but certainly against people of color. But most Bulgarians, especially young people, are more open-minded. The older generation have a harder time to accept the newer things like people of color, gender equality, or certain other rights. Bulgarian is a difficult language. It uses the Cyrillic alphabet. The language barrier, dealing with anything bureaucratic or institutional, is frustrating. Some culture shock. Bulgarians nod their yes but mean no, and vice versa. It's bizarre to see someone repeatedly shaking their head, but actually agreeing with you, and it can definitely cause some confusion. But that all being said, of the good and the bad that is a part of life anywhere you live, living in Sofia does overall have its benefits. It's affordable, vibrant, and charming, including the beautiful mountains and lovely historic cities. The list goes on. It all depends on whether it suits you as an individual. Well, tell me what you think of living in Bulgaria in the comment section below. If you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell for more of my coming content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. Be free, gain wealth, and travel far.